Hi, my name is Thomas Jan Peterson. Please allow me four minutes to explain what got me interested in thorium energy in the first place. So some people have defined these uh, global challenges and uh, I've taken this particular image from Singularity University and remixed a little bit because I want to emphasize the importance that the problems on the right side can be solved using information technology and all the problems on the left side can be solved using energy technologies. And there are already a number of global companies that have really made a dent into the information technology are helping solving those problems. And I think we will see a lot of um, solutions in the next 10 years that will really move forward on that. But on the right side, I don't see any governments or politicians or any big corporations that are willing to um, to make changes. And I think we need to have a disruption in this energy field in order to solve those problems on the left. Um, so I found this image on the internet um, and it's really true that this ball of thorium uh, can provide you with all the energy you need for your entire life including food and transportation and heating and electricity and but of course the story is a little bit more complex than that while the ball of thorium by itself costs something between one and ten dollars and thorium is available in any country of the world um, this is the problem you need a lot of neutrons to turn that into energy so the problem becomes how do you construct a machine that creates enough neutrons to actually uh, create energy from thorium. Um, and the way we are looking into doing this is that you can take spent nuclear fuel from existing nuclear reactors and make a chemical separation of that and use the plutonium part of that, which is approximately 1%. It has a lot of additional neutrons and you can use those to fire up your thorium reactor and create energy. Uh, and at the same time, you get benefit that that the spent nuclear fuel, instead of having the problem that now it has long time storage of maybe a hundred thousand years, uh, you can reduce the storage time for this down to approximately three hundred years. The way you do that, the machine you you built to make that possible is called a molten salt reactor, and it can be uh, constructed in a number of different ways. This is just a generalized schematics of a molten salt reactor. And the important thing with molten salt reactors is that they can be made really cheap and very, very safe. Much safer than any of the nuclear power plants we have today. In Copenhagen Atomics, we are trying to solve the, um, the nuclear waste problem at the same time as producing a lot of energy and do it in a in cheap way so we can basically disrupt the energy sector and make solve those global problems. Um, so these are the things we want to do in Copenhagen Atomics. We want to build a waste burner that can reduce um, the storage time for nuclear waste from more than 100,000 years down to approximately 300 years. We want to mass produce them in an assembly line. Um, we want to use plutonium to start the thorium breeder. And we want to use the thorium to burn out the actinides, that is the, um, that is the da dangerous stuff in the nuclear waste. And, and then we want to use molten salt reactor technology uh, to make it much more safe. Um, molten salt reactors has been proven to work all the way back in the 60s. Uh, so it's not some new technology that is uh, unclear. Uh, and molten salt reactors is really, really good for chemical separations. Um, and then the final thing, we want to try to fit this inside uh, some block sizes of 40 foot, foot shipping containers to make it much easier to transport and and produce in a central factory. Thank you for listening.